Hello everybody. Today I'll discuss about the second part of the steel processing, which is basically focused on the the flow analysis of the steel uh, during the steel processing and the steel solidification. So in this solidification, what can be the microstructure for the steel? That will try to focus or try to discuss uh, uh, in this particular case. Assuming that you have already have the iron carbon equilibrium phase diagram, and which is the we take that reference, we can discuss the different formation of the different kind of the structure. So that is the main focus of uh, this today's uh, this discussion. So flow analysis of the steel is basically you can see if you continuously looking into the this complete process of the steel. So melting of the material and the melting of the, the formation of the liquid steel and then pouring in the form of a casting. So here with the flow analysis means basically you try to understand during the melting or upon carrying this uh, liquid metal to before pouring into the mold cavity that stage we will try to understand that what can be the effect of the uh, different uh, flow of the gas when you pass through the liquid uh, steel or liquid molten uh, steel. So that is why most of the uh, some kind of the this uh, the processing is usually done just to purging of the uh, gas uh, basically we can say the steading of the liquid uh, steel just to impart or to just to remove the impurities uh, uh, from the liquid metal or to impart certain properties uh, that can be uh, utilized. So in that process steering of the gas by uh, liquid metal by the this kind of the inert gas is usually follow and in this case we will try to discuss the, the flow analysis basically try to understand the flow effect of the this uh, purging of the gas we will we'll try to understand this particular module. So here uh, fluid analysis of the steel is basically steering achieved by purging of the steel melt with argon gas. Argon you know this is the inner type of the gas so that such that at this particular temperature it becomes non-reactive and here this water you can purge this argon gas uh, and how it basically influence the create the kind of the flow behavior of the liquid ladle uh, the, the liquid steel with containing in a ladle that point of view we will try to discuss this uh, flow analysis. Now steering method means we can say that what we can purging the gas so it can be there are these uh, different points one is the, the steering methods in the steel melt is starting from the argon or inert type of gas purging. So it is very common method for steering the uh, melt uh, this molten steel basically. So this purging of the gas is basically performed from the bottom purging or it can be the top lens purging from the bottom purging means is the gas is introduced through the porous plug at the bottom of the ladle. So ladle means basically where we are pouring the liquid metal and we want to carry this liquid metal for the further casting. So before that we can introduce some kind of the inert gas in the ladle from the bottom. So that is called the uh, this bottom purging or it can gas can be introduced from the top also by using the vertically immersed lens from the top. Uh, the, so that gas can be introduced also this is called the top lens purging of the this uh, inert gas uh, to the uh, liquid steel. Now in this case gas evolution gases like carbon monoxide H2N2 evolve during the vacuum uh, degassing cause the uh, different steering action. So when you perform the vacuum degassing operation in that cases the, this carbon uh, monoxide H2N2 can evolve uh, during this degassing operations and of course it also brings some kind of the steering action to the liquid metal. And even the steering can also be happen using not only the purging the gas uh, apart from the steering can also happen from the uh, applying the electromagnetic field. So electromagnetic field is basically applied just to steering of the liquid metal such that uh, dissolved gas can be level of the dissolved gas can be altered or change. So but electromagnetic steering is basically we use the in the, in the secondary use in the secondary steel making operation in this case but primary operation we try to purging the different type of the uh, gases here. Now when you purging the gas so there might be some kind of the gas bubbles formation uh, in the liquid we can say that we can uh, different way we can discuss what way the this gas bubbles forms in the in the liquid. So when the gas flow is basically performed using the submerged nozzle so submerged within the metal uh, this the, through the submerged nozzle gas is basically purging and of course it try to create the discrete bubbles is usually form at low flow rate. So when flow rate is very low uh, for purging gas in that case is discrete bubble will be created. But gas can 
this is a high flow rate in that cases uh, a jet is formed from the nozzle so in that case a jet is formed from the nozzle but it happens at the very high flow rate but liquid metals are basically non weighting to the nozzle or the plug we have to choose the plug in such a way it becomes as much as possible it becomes non weightability property to the this nozzle when if because this nozzle is basically submerged uh, within the liquid metal so therefore it is better to not to having the some uh, good weightability it should have non weighting uh, properties uh, has to be maintained accordingly we have to choose the nozzle material sometimes we can use the porous bubbles also the porous plug porous plug through is the gas is actually purged in that case it can be thought of a collection of the fine tubes basically you can consider this porous um, plug it can be consist of the this uh, a large number of so the very collection of the very fine tubes basically existing uh, in, in, in this porous medium in the porous plug and in this case when at a low gas flow rate the gas flow rate is very low in this case the gas flow rate in through this uh, uh, porous tube basically uh, porous plug which act as a very uh, uh, the collection of the tubes so when uh, it is gas is purging through this porous medium it creates the discrete bubble and that actually discrete bubble is usually forms at the very low flow rate of this gas none at the parts exist however high flow rate when you flow rate is very high it bubbles uh, coalesces between the bubbles occurs and exit form looks like a very larger bubble so from here you can see here the discrete bubbles form but here you can see one big larger bubbles form so it's like in this case coalesces of the different bubbles is usually merge and then it looks like a big or single bubble but it usually happens when the purging gas flow rate is really very high rate is very high so critical gas flow rate to start in this case is the argon street uh, street ladle so when the steering action is performed by using the argon the critical gas flow rate is around 8.3 to 10 to the power minus 4 meter cube per second in the uh, or per meter cube of the bath volume so per meter cube of the bath volume we can find out the this is the gas flow rate of the argon this is the typical values we usually follow uh, in these cases now we know non weighting uh, nature of the liquid metals basically uh, on the the non weightability towards the this uh, porous medium that is material in this case bubble detachment is basically more difficult in, in this case so when it is non weightability is there properties is there and the liquid so in that cases the detachment of the bubble is little bit difficult in this case so therefore that bubbles expected to coalesce before the uh, detachment so that's why if non weightability is very high uh, for this particular medium the plug we utilize particular material in that case probably uh, that try to uh, make the the coalescence of the bubbles and because of the very high non weightability of the liquid metal towards the plug material so therefore in that cases bubbles can be coalesces before detachment from this media so that is the one fact when you try to form the gas bubbles now you can see that uh, one kind of the simulation here what uh, this it actually formed we see that is the plume formation in the gas street liquid bath so basically this is the liquid bath and gas is purging through the nozzle at the bottom you see from the bottom we are purging the liquid uh, purging the gas through the liquid bath uh, in this case into the cylindrical vessel so we are assuming this is cylindrical vessels so the this uh, from the bottom knowledge gas is purging and uh, it creates two phase region actually we can see the the gas region of the gas bubbles and the liquid around the axis known as the plume so here you can see this is the uh, this is the gas bubbles formation here through the purging of the gas so here in this zone and other is the uh, liquid so it basically two phase plume is form here uh, in this case the gas bubbles and the merging with the within the liquid but this upward movement of the bubbles in the plume induces a turbulent when is this uh, it try to move upward direction this bubbles it will try to create some kind of the turbulence within this uh, uh, ladder so recirculatory flow of the liquid within the vessel so you can see this is the this direction this liquid try to flow the liquid recirculating liquid is usually flowing within this uh, uh, this container and this actually because of the purging of the gases from the bottom so now we'll try to discuss about the this uh, steel solidification uh, that is the most important the structure form steel structure 
but when you try to understand the steel solidification here we can see that uh, understanding of the um, phase diagram. So, equilibrium phase diagram and we can see that this phase diagram is the is uh, basically uh, the temperature y axis and x axis represent the, the carbon dissolved uh, in the steel. We can see the 6.67 or we can say 6.67 weight percent of the maximum weight percent of the carbon can dissolve in a steel and it forms the different uh, steel structure. So, different structure or different microstructure and we can see the different phases also. So, here we see that this uh, liquid temperature of this phases is where it is actually varying with respect to the composition of the carbon content. So, we see that the 4.3 that at this point there is a the liquid phase exists at the, at the lowest temperature uh, in this case, uh, but uh, the composition can be 4.3 uh, that means weight percentage of the carbon equal to 4.3 weight percentage of carbon in this case liquid phase can exist at the lowest temperature. Now, if you say 2.14 percentage of the carbon or 0 0.76 percentage of the carbon, we can say the liquid phase is basically the exist over the composition over the carbon percentage of the steel dissolve that exist at the at higher temperature. So, depends actually the melting temperature depends is basically uh, or other you can say that under equilibrium condition the composition of the this. Uh, amount of the carbon dissolved in this particular steel. So, therefore, with the variation of the carbon percentage we can categorize the different types of the steel. So, usually we know that it is a uh, we see already mentioned that thing the carbon percentage is less than around 2 percent less than 2 percent that we categorize as a steel more than 2 percent we can consider this as a cast iron. So, therefore, we are our restriction is steel solidification means our analysis restricted to our carbon percentage is up to uh, 2, 2 or 2.1 percentage of the uh, carbon. Now, uh, here you see the solidification is the basically transformation of the molten steel into a solid state that we say that from molten steel to the solid state transformation we usually understand the by uh, there is the, uh, the solidification and after solidification it try to form the final microstructure and that final microstructure decide the uh, properties of the steel when you try to utilize this particular steel in, in a spe specific application. So, it is very important to know what can be the how to relate the carbon percentage and the different types of the steel and their properties just to try to look into the overview of that. Now, if you see different phases also we can see the delta ferrite is the single phase structure and we can say the alpha ferrite single phase structure we see the cementite this is another phase and we can see that is the liquid and this is austenitic phase. So, these are the single phase within the structure and we see in between we can see this is the mixture of the austenitic phase plus Fe3C. Here is a completely liquid phase. Here you can see the, the mixture of the solid and liquid austenitic phase plus liquid phase. Here you can see and in this part we can see delta ferrite also and say here you can see the mixture of the alpha ferrite plus Fe3C I mean to say the cementite mixture of the ferrite plus cementite. So, different different zone we can see that there are different phases or there is a mixture of the phases also. And of course, we need to understand that the properties related to we need to first we have to look carefully what is the this, uh, this diagram the how these uh, different phases changes existence of the different phases with respect to temperature, existence of the different phases with respect to the composition. Composition means what is the weight percentage of the carbon presence in the steel. So, that actually decide the different phases existence of the different phases in the and that information we can get from the this equilibrium uh, this diagram equilibrium phase diagram. Now, once we identify these are different phases we see the alpha ferrite is the one solid phase presence in the steel, gamma means austenitic phase it is also solid phase and delta ferrite it is also another solid phase we can see this all the solid phases exist here. Now, see that uh, the alpha ferrite is basically solid solution of the carbon in BCC iron actually pure iron is having the stuck the iron is a certain temperature uh, the room temperature iron is having the crystal structure is BCC body center cubic structure. So, here the alpha ferrite is basically solid solution of carbon in the BCC iron. So, that uh, an alpha ferrite is very stable and near the room temperature, but in this case is the alpha ferrite the maximum solubility of the carbon equal to 0 0.02 weight percentage and uh, this maximum solubility can occur the 
here the maximum solubility is because this point is maximum solubility of the carbon in the alpha ferrite we can see the alpha ferrite can dissolve maximum amount of the uh, 0.028 percent of the carbon and that actually happens at the eutectoid temperature that is you can see this this temperature 727 degree centigrade so at that temperature it can dissolve maximum 0 0.02 percentage of the carbon so that's why you can see the alpha ferrite so the alpha ferrite is a uh, this is almost pure iron but it is having maximum solubility of the carbon equal to 0 0.028 percentage similarly gamma austenitic phase it is also solid solution of the carbon in fcc iron so basically austenitic phase is uh, in this case the crystal structure of this austenitic phase is basically fcc that means this phase is basically exist at the higher temperature so in this case maximum solubility of the carbon in the austenitic phase can go up to 2.14 percentage at the eutectic temperature we can see that eutectic temperature uh, it is a 11.47 I think 2.14 this is the dust uh, temperature uh, sorry uh, corresponding temperature and composition. So at this point the maximum solubility of the carbon in the austenitic phase equal to 2.14 percentage of the, uh, the carbon here. So this exists at the 11.47 here you can see the crystal structure of, of this phase austenitic phase is basically FCC which is different from the BCC iron. So FCC and we see this existence of the structure austenitic phase is relatively at the high temperature but not stable below the 727 degree centigrade unless cooled rapidly. So if we follow the under cooling under equilibrium condition then austenitic phase is basically not stable at the lower than 727 degree centigrade. So it is basically stability of the austenitic we can see the stability of the austenitic centigrade here is above 727 degree centigrade the this austenitic phase is stable but below 720 degree centigrade we can follow the ferrite is more stable structure alpha ferrite and uh, cementite the or mixture of alpha ferrite and cementite these are the stable structure in this case similarly delta ferrite is basically also solid solution of the carbon in bcc iron so here the stable only at very high temperature but this delta ferrite stability of the is existence at the very high temperature and above 1394 degree centigrade so this is the delta ferrite so this existence above 1394 degree centigrade but males at 1538 so this temperature and this temperature within that range the existence of this composition uh, of this phase but maximum solubility of this uh, delta ferrite i think also it's not mentioned i think it's a very low carbon percentage can uh, exist in the in the in the delta ferrite structure also so here see that delta fer ferrite we are telling but this delta ferrite the existence of the delta ferrite is basically high temperature uh, phase here now once you understand that these are the different phases existing from the um, equilibrium phase diagram of the between iron and iron carbide and i say that equilibrium phase diagram between iron and iron ap3c iron carbide we are get this all this information from this diagram now what we can utilize or analyze this diagram so that different steel structure different steel microstructure will form so one important is the eutectoid steel so you see this is the eutectoid so eutectoid with this reaction is basically eutectoid where the carbon percentage is 0 0.76 so austenitic phase is basically decomposed into the two different phases so ferrite plus cementite so that happens one particular temperature one particular composition so this is known as the this uh, eutectoid solid or we can say other this is called the pearlite structure so he in this case how it reaction occurs we can see that is the this pearlite structure is basically here the from this figure we can zoom it we can find this is the this is the composition corresponding composition and corresponding temperature at this point equilibrium condition this reaction actually uh, happens so one solid phase is basically from austenitic phase decomposed into two different solid phase but since the composition occurs at 0 0.77 carbon percentage uh, this is uh, this known as the eutectoid steel or it forms the pearlite structure steel structure but this is when we are talking about 0 0.77 percentage of carbon and if you remember the iasi nomenclature how to define the different classification of the steel different category of the steel so definitely it represents the 1077 steel so 10077 the plain carbon steel 
and in this case but the carbon percentage is 0 0.77 percentage. So, this actually develop unique microstructure that is known as the pardilite structure. So, it actually usually occurs for the only this particular carbon composition on this composition. When steel is held at 80 degree centigrade that means just above 727 degree centigrade uh, much above. So, nearly 800 degree centigrade and it is holding for a minute or two then it will put it entirely converted to the austenitic phase. So, austenitic grains now from there if you cool it and to a temperature below 727 degree centigrade following certain uh, cooling rate, but cooling rate is not too high, it is a, a little slow. In that cases that if you temperature below 727 degree centigrade and holding for 5 to 10 minutes basically reaching the after crossing the 727 degree centigrade, if you hold it from 5 to 10 minutes then it forms from austenitic grains is actually the converted to the pardalite structure. So, here we say the austenitic grains are completely replaced by the pardalite grain. So, this pardalite grain you can see uh, pardalite grain is basically it is a mixture of two alternate layer ferrite and cementite. We can say the alpha plus cm the mixture of two different phases ferrite plus cementite, but it follow a very specific morphology. So, this is it is looks like the alternating plates of the ferrite and cementite. So, alternating plates of the ferrite and cementite the its structure is usually formed. But if you see the 0 0.778 percentage of the carbon and if you see that uh, this pardalite composition the percentage of the ferrite because it is a austenitic phase this carbon uh, 0 0.778 percentage of the carbon at this composition it is basically decomposed into cementite and ferrite. But cementite ferrite from one specific morphology such that alternate plates of ferrite and cementite that actually creates the very specific structure which is known as the pardalite structure. Now in this case the ferrite plates are significantly wider than the cementite plates because in this case the this uh, occupy 90 percent of the volume compared to the only 10 percent for the cementite. So, in the parallel structure although we are telling the mixture of the alternate layers of the ferrite and cementite, but ferrite percentage is much more as compared to the uh, cementite because ferrite is almost 90 percent and ferrite uh, cementite is almost uh, 10 percent. Of course, we can calculate uh, this thing by applying the lever rule also what is the composition of the phase. So, we can see that the in if you see the parallel we show in the parallel composition is the uh, 0 0.778 percentage of the carbon, but we know it is a mixture of cementite and ferrite, ferrite is 0 0.028 percentage of the carbon and cementite is 6.678 percentage of the carbon. We can say that in this mixture ferrite plus parallel we can simply calculate the ferrite the proportionate way. So, ferrite can be uh, this thing so uh, 6.67 minus 0 0.77 divided by 6.67 and uh, minus 0 0.02 the range between the range and the spheroid means this difference divided by the total differences that indicates the ferrite. Similarly, cementite can be like that also this difference is 0 0.77 minus 0 0.02 by 6. Point the complete bar difference 6.67 minus 0 0.02. If you calculate it, then you can find out the fraction of the ferrite and cementite. This just simply proportionate way you can calculate, which is known as the lever rule. Probably engineering materials course you have studied this application of the lever rule. So, here you can easily calculate the ferrite, but roughly you can say that this uh, cementite can be low and the pardalite, the ferrite can be higher, but then it follow this kind of the pattern. So, which is a mixture of ferrite uh, uh, this cementite and then which is known as the this pardalite structure. Now, if the cementite plates are the lighter phase from the if you see the ACM microscopy, then cementite phase appear in the form of a lighter phase and the ferrite which is basically uh, represented in terms of the dark phase. And also cementite plates are only 0 0.1 micrometer thickness. So, we can morphological study you can do and we can measure the thickness and the color contrast based on that we can identify whether it is ferrite phase or whether it is the cementite phase. Now, if we further call the 1077 still from 700 degree centigrade that means already uh, this pardalite forms actually and then but below 700 degree centigrade to gradually through the room temperature then microstructure will not change because it is already uh, converted to the this the pardalite structure. So, even 
in that cases no matter how slow or fast the sample is, is basically cool basically one stable structure is formed then it is very difficult to transform from the stable structure to microstructure to another microstructure even we can vary the even varying the cooling rate either slow cooling rate or the very high cooling rate uh, we can follow but we cannot change much the the stable structure during this cooling phase now we can discuss in the other way also now with take as a reference of the this eutectic eutectoid point so with respect to that uh, we can say the hypo eutectoid steel and hyper eutectoid steel hypo means the car carbon composition is less than eutectoid steel and hyper means the carbon composition is more than eutectoid steel so we take the reference of the eutectoid steel then if we see the uh, different low carbon steel also so in that case the in pure iron is basically austenitic transform to the ferrite on the cooling to 9 12 degree centigrade so if you see this temperature is 9 12 degree centigrade pure iron so 100 percent iron so here austenite uh, pure iron austenite transforms to the ferrite so in the reaction if you follow at this this is the composition uh, uh, of zero percentage of the carbon or almost pure iron then if you cool it then it actually the changing the phase uh, try to form the the alpha the ferrite structure so but it starts on the 912 degree centigrade and adding carbon to the iron so now it is the pure iron 9, 920 degree centigrade it is in the austenitic phase now if i keep on under but suppose we, if you 0.4 near the 0.4 percentage of the carbon so you can see that this austenitic phase can exist even lower temperature so we mean to say that even i keep on increasing the carbon content uh, when carbon content increases this actually lowers the boundary temperature lowers this temperature that means the transformation temperature from one phase to another phase so uh, maximum lowering can occurs in the eutectoid point so once gradually lowering lowering so basically austenitic phase can exist in the lowest temperature which is the uh, eutectoid temperature in this particular case now the eutectoid point represents the temperature and composition of the phase diagram so that is the we can see the eutectoid point is a that is the one uh, reference point with respect to that we can say that the temperature and composition can be helped which is basically indicated in the phase diagram and this is also helps to understand the other phases also which occurs during the reaction so now when where the eutectoid reaction occurs that is a reaction where the one solid frame transformed into the already you have explained the eutectoid composition one uh, in this case is the this is the solid phase the another two solid phase s1 and s2 at this point so s1 is basically ferrite and s2 equal to cementite so whatever phase is going to be it consists of the two phases the room temperature and where carbon percentage is the eutectoid carbon so i can say the eutectoid steels now eutectoid point is the carbon system has 0 point uh, the reference point and steels composition less than 0 0.778 percent of carbon which is known as the hypo eutectoid steel now we will try to focus on the hypo eutectoid steel what how what the reaction usually occurs now ferrite we can see the ferrite already mentioned that it can dissolve up to 0.02 percentage of the carbon and that is also at eutectoid temperature and eutectoid temperature of 7 to 7 degree centigrade and making it essentially pure iron although we are telling the alpha ferrite very low carbon percentage is there but that's so we can so only 0.028 percent of the carbon can dissolve here in the ferrite so we can consider this as a almost pure iron from this diagram now in the hypo eutectoid steel for the low carbon steel the if we look into the reaction that austenite is the we can see the austenitic phase is the which is the another form of the iron here you can see the austenitic phase there are with the variation of the carbon percentage the different variation of the carbon can uh, carbon can dissolve is the austenitic phase and the existence of this phase at the the different above one particular temperature that we have already mentioned the austenitic phase even this temperature austenitic phase is there even this temperature also austenitic phase is there this temperature austenitic phase also there but in these two cases the carbon percentage are different in this case now austenitic another form of the iron can dissolve much more carbon than ferrite of course ferrite can dissolve only 0.028 percent of the carbon but austenitic phase can dissolve more per carbon percentage but of course this uh, in in this case but if it austenitic phase can dissolve carbon percentage is less than 0.77 percentage and then it is it is known as the this hypo in that is the case of the hypo eutectoid steel now carbon percentage at the eutectoid temperature due to is the fcc structure so why it is happening because austenitic phase is phase is having the fcc structure phase center cubic structure but pure iron or alpha ferrite i can say it is having the 
uh, this is the BCC structure. So, since it is having the FCC structure, large spaces between the iron atoms available, so that it can accommodate uh, large amount of the this carbon percentage as compared to the BCC structure. Now, when suppose we are considering the composition of the steel 0.7 percentage of a carbon, which is we can consider this as a hypo eutectoid steel. That means this carbon percentage is less than the eutectoid uh, carbon percentage. Now, suppose it is move, uh, cooled from 850 degree centigrade, so 800, so 850 degrees roughly, so here is okay, 840, so 850 is this one. So, suppose this is the 850 degree centigrade and carbon percentage is around uh, 0 0.4 percentage of the carbon. Now, in this case, 850 degree centigrade, the phase existence is the austenitic phase. Now, what will happen if we cool it from 850 degree centigrade to uh, lower temperature? Now, once it is done that 850 to 760 degree centigrade, so 850 to 760 degree is basically 760 degree is this, this temperature, so at this point. So, once it is there as per phase diagram, it basically enters in the mixture of the ferrite, uh, ferrite plus austenite mixture at this particular temperature. So, when 850 to 760 degree temperature, it is cooled down from austenitic, pure austenitic phase, completely austenitic phase to it basically to different the ferrite is try to form and that actually alpha ferrite, alpha grains is along the prior austenitic grain boundaries, it is try to form another phase, alpha ferrite is usually forms. So, here we see at this particular temperature, uh, this existence of a mixture of ferrite plus austenitic structure. Now, further cool it 760 degree to below uh, 727 degree centigrade. 727 degree centigrade is the this temperature, that is the eutectoid temperature. So, in this case, 727 up to 727 degree centigrade is basically this carbon composition of the austenite grains, the within the austenitic grains carbon composition gradually try to increase uh, to exactly 0 0.77 percent of the carbon which is known as the eutectoid composition. So, it is try to form the eutectoid composition where carbon percentage is basically changes here 0 0.77 percentage of the carbon, but do not confuse with this thing the increasing the carbon composition because in that cases it creates the phase to different phases eutectoid the paralyte phase which is known as the austenitic uh, eutectoid composition, but this particular phase it creates the overall equivalent carbon percentage will be the same. The total equivalent carbon percentage will always be the 0 0.4 percentage, but if the, there is a different form phase or form. So, here the different phase are formed basically it try to phase that if this phase is formed. So, this phase is basically paralyte phase, it must be having the 0 0.77 weight percentage of the carbon. If alpha ferrite is formed, in this case it is also having 0 0.02 weight percentage of the carbon, but overall carbon percentage is always be the balance in this particular case. So, 760 to 727 cooling in this case is the eutectoid composition will try to the fraction or amount of the eutectoid composition will try to increase in this cases. Now, at this temperature that means at 727 microstructure looks like uh, how did it uh, at 760 degree centigrade. So, microstructure looks like what were we observed at the 760 degree centigrade because equivalent carbon percent is the same. The main difference is that ferrite grains become slightly thicker. In this case the ferrite phase it becomes slightly thicker and the carbon content of the austenite grains reaches the eutectoid point at 0 0.77 weight percent of carbon. So, austenitic phase in this case is basically enriched with the carbon percentage, it must be having the 0 0.77 weight percentage of the carbon. Now, further if we cool it from 727 to room temperature, then the this austenitic grains will in again transforms to the paralyte grain. So, is basically below this thing, the austenitic grain is basically converted to the completely paralyte grain. So, paralyte grain means is also a basically mixture of the ferrite plus cementite, but effective carbon percentage of the paralyte grain is 0 0.77 weight percentage of the carbon. And this paralyte grain and other cases, it will try to mix of the paralyte grain plus alpha ferrite also uh, will try to form. Now, if you look into uh, this, the uh, hyper eutectoid still that means a carbon percentage is more than 0 0.4 percentage we can take this as a reference this particular point. So, it is hyper eutectoid is around 1 percentage of the carbon weight percentage of the carbon and if it is cool it then what will happen what are the different structure will try to form. So, in this case we see the increasing the carbon percentage dissolved in the austenitic phase iron atoms is basically 
related to the stretching the chemical bond and generating the strain energy. So, if you try to incorporate, try to incorporate the increase the carbon percentage dissolved. So, 1 percent is carbon mean the austenitic phase is there, but in this case the carbon percentage is more as compared to the this hypo eutectoid steel. So, in hyper eutectoid steel the carbon percentage is more, but although phase are the same. So, it, it depends on the what a the carbon is actually dissolved in the austenitic phase. Now, once we start with the 8 20 degree centigrade, we see that the solubility limit of the austenitic phase is basically in, in this in this particular position the solubility carbon percentage is 1 percentage of the carbon. So, we can say the solubility limit to the for the austenitic phase is 1 weight percentage of the carbon. Now, 1 weight percent, percent of the carbon uh, dissolves uh, is basically in the austenitic phase. So, that we can observe from this uh, diagram. Then cementite because it already you are talking about the cementite uh, from the so in this case the hyperitrexial this is the pyrolite is the one side and the cementite is the other side these are the two reference in between that two the cementite is actually chemical composition com uh, compound with a fixed amount of the carbon percentage it is having 0.678 percent of the carbon can dissolve in the cementite maximum so there usually the cementite is brittle and of course so, presence of the cementite influence the mechanical properties also usually. Now, if steel composition 0.95 percent of the carbon close to 1 percent is cooled from the 850 degree centigrade, then what will happen? From 850 degree to 760 degree centigrade, actually uh, it forms the cementite grains at the austenitic boundary. So, definitely you will try to form the carbon particles is much more than it is try to form the cementite phase. So, some percent, uh, some volume part fraction will be the cementite phase and that will try to form the at the austenitic boundary. So, in the austenitic if you see this austenitic so grain boundary it will try to form the, the uh, cementite uh, here. So, if you remember when you try to discuss the hypo eutectoid steel there you can see the when you cool down or the one uh, high temperature to the low temperature in that cases uh, around the, the austenitic phase we can see that uh, there is a formation of the uh, this alpha ferrite you see that in this composition here in this cases the alpha ferrite is from the grain boundary. So, in this case one side is the perlite boundary and other side is the alpha ferrite. So, between these two the composition mixture will be formed the microstructure might be consist of the mixture of the perlite plus uh, this again ferrite even perlite itself is a mixture of the ferrite plus cementite. Now, similarly when you try to hyper eutectoid steel then it, uh, we can see the composition can be mixture of the perlite and the cementite. So, cementite cementite grains is usually start forming at the austenitic boundaries. Now, further 760 degree to 727 which is you now the eutectoid temperature the austenitic composition will be dropped gradually and eutectoid composition of the the will drop to the eutectoid composition try to reach the 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 phase which is having the eutectoid composition with 0 0.778 percent of the carbon. So, that type of the structure it will try to form at the uh, 7, 727 degree centigrade. If you further lower to the room temperature then this austenitic grains will transform into the perlite grains again. So, the austenite will transform into the perlite grains and remaining will be in the form of a uh, uh, form of the cementite phase. So, here we see uh, this it can be mixture of the perlite plus uh, cementite structure it will try to uh, form in in, the, in case of the hyper eutectoid steel. Now, once we get the understanding the different types of the steel and their structure different phases form in case of the steel also. Then we try to what we can calculate the uh, volume fraction of the these uh, different phases of the steel. We can simply apply the lever rule, and we can see that uh, calculation we can we can show. And but of course we need to know from the understand the phase diagram where we will get the information about the volume fraction of the uh, eutectoid steel the um, this, the different phases actually where this is the pro eutectoid steel presence in the in, in the steel. So, suppose we take an example also 1075 steel, we 1075 steel where carbon percentage is 0 0.75 percentage of the carbon composition is there which is very close to the perlite composition because perlite is 0 0.778 percentage of the carbon. So, therefore, in this case this steel when the this uh, steel is close to the this perlite composition that 0 0.778 percentage of the carbon in that case it will try to uh, form completely 100 percent of the perlite structure because this 100 percent of the perlite structure is basically 778 percentage of the carbon is there. So, that is why it will try to completely 100 percent of the carbon. Similarly, suppose 1005 steel. So, here you can see the 
carbon percentage is 0 0.05 percentage of the carbon. So, it is very close to the ferrite composition because ferrite composition is carbon percentage is actually 0 0.02 percentage of the carbon. So, therefore, here this still must mostly ferrite and maybe mostly ferrite means the very close to the 100 percent 98 99 percent ferrite it will form and very small comp, uh, will be percentage will be the pyrolite will be there. So, I mean to say that when it is the carbon composition is 0 0.77 weight percent of the carbon, it is created the 100 percent pyrolite. But when we can say the carbon percent 0 0.028 percent of the carbon, we can say the 100 percent uh, ferrite and here 100 percent pyrolite will form. So, we take this as a representation. Now, what will happen if the carbon percentage is in between? So, if carbon percentage is in between the ferrite and pyrolite structure, then it will try to form the mixture of the ferrite plus pyrolite. But how, but how the what are the proportionate way we can calculate what is the fraction of the pyrolite and what is the fraction of the cementite ferrite in this particular case that we can calculate. Now, but of course, in this case, we take the, the this as a pyrolite as a reference because pyrolite itself is a mixture of the ferrite plus cementite. Now, let x is equal to the overall composition of the hypo eutectoid steel, hypo eutectoid steel and then the volume fraction of the ferrite in the steel is basically ferrite fraction is basically 0 0.77 x. But of course, here we are assuming the, uh, the steel mixing of the pyrolite plus uh, ferrite. So, ferrite plus pyrolite mixing we are assuming the steel, then you can take this as a two reference line and based on that we can calculate what is the pyrolite percentage what is the ferrite percentage in this case. But if you take the reference line now if it is also possible that suppose uh, we, are, we are taking the 0 0.02 uh, percentage 0 0.028 percentage of the ferrite and 6.678 percentage is the carbon is basically indicates the cementite. So, here we can say this is the ferrite plus cementite. Now, suppose in between any, any steel uh, carbon percentage if we consider and that we can consider this is a mixture of the ferrite plus cementite. Then also proportionate way we can calculate what is the percentage of the cementite, what is the percentage of the ferrite. So, both way calculation is there, but first we have to decide the reference line and based on this reference point we can say we can assuming the binary phase mixture and then we can say that what is the percentage of the phase there depending upon the mixture. Now, in this case, first case we are considering as a these two boundary one is the uh, ferrite and another is the pyrolite. We are assuming the steel mixture of the ferrite plus pyrolite. Then we can calculate what is the ferrite fraction. Ferrite fraction can be calculated suppose this is the x composition of the carbon equal to x and here composition ferrite is composition of carbon equal to 0 0.02 and pyrolite composition of the carbon equal to 0 0.77. Now and suppose this is the x percentage of the carbon. Now what is the in this x percentage of the carbon what is the phase ferrite phase present, we can say the difference between these two divided by the difference between these two. So, here 0 0.77 minus x and then 0 0.77 minus 0 0.02. So, this indicates the ferrite fraction and remaining will be the I can say the pyrolite fraction. Now, uh, here for 0.1045 still we are assuming that the if we calculate this way you can say the 43 percent ferrite fraction will be calculated from this equation. Similarly, similar type of rule is applied for the hypo eutectoid steel. Now, if you hypo eutectoid steel, we are assuming that it is a mixture of the uh, cementite plus pyrolite, maybe in this case. So, these two are references we can consider 0 0.77 the ferrite, uh, uh, pyrolite, and cementite. So, in that case, in between the carbon percentage is equal to x, for example. Now, what is the the cementite fraction. What is the fraction cementite? Cementite fraction, what is the carbon percentage difference between these two divided by the, what is the carbon percentage difference between the total uh, these two. So, here x uh, minus 0. Point, uh, uh, sorry cementite that means we have to consider the other side that this is the differences. So, here x and this is the x, x minus 0. 0.77 divided by 6.67 minus 0 0.77 carbon percentage and based on that we can say that in 1095 still the fraction of the cementite is only 3 percent. Now, if I ask you uh, any carbon percentage now we can say absolute values of the what is the cementite and what is the whether it is uh, the whether it is the because uh, we can say the pyrolite we are telling that we take as the reference of the pyrolite but pyrolite itself is basically having the ferrite plus cementite this structure. Now, if you take want to find out any composition of the steel what is the ferrite fraction what is the 
cementite fraction in that cases we need to consider the two reference line one is the this uh, cementite and another is the ferrite. So, 0.028 percent is of the carbon and cementite 6.678 percent of the carbon and suppose x percent any steel. So, you can find out that x in terms of the what is the uh, ferrite fraction, ferrite fraction mean carbon difference of the carbon percent between these two divided by the difference carbon between these two. Here is the ferrite fraction in this particular steel and cementite fraction will be the 100 percent minus what is the fraction is 100 percentage minus what is the percentage of the ferrite is there. The difference indicates the, the percentage of the cementite in this particular structure. So, this application of the lever rule or all this calculation proportionate way the first step is to we have to define what is the boundary. So, that means boundary means what is the reference line you are considering and based on that we can calculate what is the the, the percentage of the different uh, phase in a phase mixer. But of course, it is we are assuming it is a binary phase mixer. So, with that particular phase mixer we can calculate using this uh, process. Now, steel solidification further can be calculated that uh, different kind of the, the cooling rate. Uh, so, one is the if the cooling rate is slow cooling rate and the fast cooling rate. If the cooling rate is relatively slow, then what are the different phases usually we can observe. So, pro eutectoid phase then before the eutectoid phase, it is basically we can see the, the localized along prior austenitic grain boundaries uh, is less common as steel composition moves away from the eutectoid uh, composition. So, pro eutectoid phases we can say that prior austenitic grain boundaries is less. Uh, usually you do not find out the this austenitic grain boundaries uh, is basically very less common in the composition if we follow the cooling if uh, the slow cooling uh, the, the cooling rate is relatively slow and less common as the steel composition moves away from the uh, eutectoid uh, composition. So, when if you take eutectoid composition away from the eutectoid composition we either hyper site or hypo eutectoid steel we compose these things we can see gradually the austenitic grain boundary is basically less found at the when cooling rate is relatively low. The microstructure for example, the 1018 steel, it is basically furnace cool from the austenitic region has dark perlite occupying the smaller volume fraction compared to the 1045 steel. So, 1018 steel means the weight percentage of the carbon equal to 0 0.18. In this case, when it is cool, uh, slow cooling in the furnace, control cooling we can see and the, we can see the austenitic region has the dark perlite. So, occupying the dark perlite part because austenitic phase represent, but that part is very smaller volume present fraction and which is the smaller volume as compared to the 1045 steel. 1045 steel means the carbon percentage is equal to 0 0.45 weight percentage of the carbon. So, we see that away from this thing, uh, we can see this is the austenitic is the, the volume of the austenitic region is very very small in this case. Now, but ferrite and perlite in 1018 steel appears and the alternative band, but if you look into 101 steel in this cases we can see the ferrite phase and the uh, perlite phase is basically alternative layer, uh, alternative band we can form and the is basically kind of band structure is usually formed steel structure and this structure occurs virtually all hypo eutectoid steel. Hypo eutectoid steel the less than this uh, this eutectoid composition. So, in that particular steel uh, we can find out uh, this similar kind of the this kind of the band structure alternate layer of the ferrite plus perlite layer can be found out. If heavily deform the slow cool from the austenitic range in that cases we can form this structure, but it depends on the cooling rate because if we follow the slow cooling rate then only we can get this kind of the banded structure we can follow we, we can expect uh, right hand side also we can see this is the figure also on the this we see the austenitic phase uh, this is basically is low in in this case now if we follow the rapid cooling also then basically rapid cooling we are not allowing diffusion to occur when you are restrict the diffusion to occur then we can form the different kind of the structure mm -hmm. so if stool is basically cool very rapidly from the austenitic zone that means you are starting point is the at the particular temperature and this that temperature all phases in the austenitic phase exist. Now, from the austenitic region if you start the rapid cooling then in that cases the relative amounts composition no longer be estimated from the phase diagram. So, we cannot estimate just looking into the phase diagram if rapid cooling is followed. So, basically in, in this cases because equivalent phase diagram is basically 
constructed by assuming the equal uh, we are telling the equilibrium phase diagram so that means basically mathematically we are following the infinitely uh, slow process so cooling rate is very very slow so that is why this rapid cooling this the information from the this thing is may not be valid or may not be useful uh, from the equilibrium phase diagram. So higher cooling rate is usually from the martensitic structure bionite or martensitic structures, structure specific to the steel. Now we see that at slower end of this faster cooling rate at the end of the faster cooling rate we can see the mixture of perlite and the ferrite for the low carbon steel. So, if it is a we can see that uh, cooling rate is relatively slow in that cases perlite plus ferrite for the low carbon steel we can form and perlite plus cementite we can expect for the high carbon steel and but amount of the perlite depends on the uh, entirely depends what is the amount of the perlite will form uh, and it entirely depends on the cooling rate because cooling rate is very rapid means is basically it to try to reach some kind of the non equilibrium phase so that is why this structure depends on the this cooling rate what is the amount of the perlite is easily forms or what is the carbon percentage or it is a high carbon percentage or low carbon percentage different structure will form and that is specifically rapid cooling but in general we can say the rapid cooling only as associated with the other binite structure or, or the austenitic structure uh, sorry martensitic structure or martensitic formation we see the steel squenching by immersing basically uh, how you can expect the martensitic structure what we can enhance the cooling rate we simply uh, put the uh, this thing the heated sample the austenitic phase at the high temperature in a different medium say water oil and the liquid salt so in this different media so they they produce the different kind of the cooling rate so that's a different cooling rate is forms and we can get the different kind of the structure but usually in general cooling rate is very high we can see that uh, that martensitic structure. So, if quenching from the austenitic phase actually uh, from austenitic prevents the transformation to ferrite plus cementite. So, they because cooling rate is very high and uh, from austenitic phase if we start it and if we follow rapid cooling it try to prevent the formation of the ferrite plus uh, cementite structure rather than it will follow the martensitic structure. So, martensitic structure is basically produced by following the at the high cooling rate. Martensitic formation increases uh, the increases the strength significantly actually formation of the martensitic is enhances the structural strength of the component uh, tremendously but there might be some other disadvantage also so that is why we can we can if we discuss also that we see that how it occurs because austenitic phase we know already austenitic phase is basically FCC structure FCC can dissolve much more amount of the carbon uh, with respect to the ferrite structure because ferrite is a BCC structure in that case the ferrite can dissolve very low carbon percentage and which is very low as compared to the FCC structure austenitic phase. So, therefore, when rapid cooling is basically uh, done in that cases the, the it actually taps the carbon in the ferrite. So, uh, basically try to distorting the crystal structure to form a new type of the crystal structure which is known as the BCT, BCT body center tetragonal structure. So, basically in this case that uh, which is martensite the uh, I mean to say the martensitic structure we are telling but crystal structure of martensite we can say it is a kind of a distorted from the BCC structure which is known as the BCT body center tetragonal structure which is the crystal structure for the martensite. Now there are different types of the martensite also which is the lath martensite, plate martensite and the mixed structure. Lath type martensite is actually forms with 0 to 0 0.6 percent of the carbon. So, it appears the fuzzy and indistinct. So, that type of the, uh, the it appears in the lath martensite in the structure. We can see the lath martensitic structure in this case. The 0 0.18 carbon percentage B is the, the plate martensite structure. The, you can see the plate martensite structure having the relatively higher carbon percentage and mixed structure of the martensite. So, mixed structure is basically you can see the mixed structure of martensite is the lath plus plate type of the martensite that type of the structure is usually formed in this case. So, we can see the the lath type of the martensite structure is usually from the low carbon percentage, but plate type of the martensitic structure will form when it is the carbon percentage is higher. So, above 1 percentage of the carbon. Plate martensitic shows the visible plate surrounded by the retained austenite. So, here you can see the plate martensite is basically structure the form it, but it is surrounded by the retained austenite and mixed type of the structure usually forms between 0 0.6 to 1 carbon percentage. 
so from the microstructure you can see there is a variation of the different type of the uh, uh, structure matricytic structure we, we can see now there is another phase which is from usually rap relatively rapid cooling that is called the bionite structure so bionite forms actually from the austenitic uh, phase when steel is basically cooled faster than the rate uh, to form the pyrolite but slower than the needed to form the matricytic so cooling rate is in between the formation of the pyrolite and formation of the matricytic structure if the cooling rate is in between these two then it produces the uh, bionite structure but bionite structure is basically uh, along the old austenitic grain boundaries the and similar to the pyrolite structure more or less but morphology little difference is there so in this case during the first cooling the composition competition between the bionite and the pyrolite formation is usually occurs and uh, this usually occurs along the grain boundaries so which is actually try to form whether bionite will form or whether pyrolite formation will be stable at the grain boundary so that is the actually there is a competition between these two but bionite is basically bionite is also mixture of the ferrite plus cementite in this case so if you remember the pyrolite we are telling the mixture of the ferrite plus cementite and so it's kind of alternate layer bionite also similar kind of the mixture of ferrite cementite but in this case cementite in the bionite is appears as a in terms as a filaments or the small particles dispersed in a ferrite matrix so here the cementite is basically dispersed in a ferrite matrix but in the form of a small particles so that is the typical structure of the bionite mixture and which is the plate like structure in which is not like the plate like structure in the pyrolite which is completely different from the plate like structure you can see this is the plate like structure alternate layer of this thing but here bionite structure is the this carbon here the cementite is formed in the the particle dispersed particles is usually formed so here is the difference between the bionite and the pyrolite structure a cm image you can see so here okay so here is basically you can see the this this structure this particle this is the bionite structure and this is the pyrolite structure we can clearly distinguish uh, this thing here this this is the pyrolite structure here you can form but here you can see the bionite structure mixture of these two can form and which is more uh, associated with the grain boundary and there is a competition between these two or between the binary or pyrolite formation will they are bionite structure will form but bionite is basically uh, uh, cementite in the bionite appears in the form of small particles cementite appears in the dark phase in the same image our pyrolite shows the cementite as a fine plates this is the difference so in bionite cementite is basically appears in the dark phase but pyrolite in pyrolite cementite is shows as the in the in the form of a very fine plates while bionite shows the ribbon shaped filaments or particles so bionite uh, in in bionite this in the cementite is present in the form of a ribbon shaped filaments or particles but in case of the uh, pyrolite cementite forms in the form of a thin plate fine plate so these are the difference between the bionite and the pyrolite structure but bionite also having two varieties one is the upper bionite structure and the uh, lower bionite structure so here upper bionite has the coarse carbide particles but while lower bionite has the finer and closely spaced particle these are the basic difference between the upper and the lower bionite structure now we will try to discuss about the uh, difference the powder processing technologies powder processing technologies is basically in the steel industry this is very well known technologies that actually indicates or uh, describe the what are the technologies and methods is basically implemented in the steel industry to better way the manage or handle the steel materials because steel industry there are so many sub components are there in the steel industry so many components are joined together to manufacture the steel so here managing of the individual unit is basically in the tax for that purpose is the the well known terminology that is the uh, product uh, processing technologies is basically associated with the the steel industry and of course it actually this technology is basically is important to ensure the efficient production maintaining the high quality and as well as the safety which is more important in the steel industry in basically associated with this basically what way we can use the various technologies and the methods are used to manipulate and handle the steel material that is known as the powder technologies so some of the main product technologies used in the industry we have tried to explain one is the electromagnetic product so electromagnetic products is basically the electron are used the magnetic field to manipulate the steel products and particularly useful in the handling and the positioning so you can see the 
what are the big big components is basically handle and positioning to transporting from one position to another position. So, that is basically uh, that is known as the electromagnetic product. So, electromagnetic uh, field here we can utilize to transport here from one position to another position. So, application is the magnetic lifting. So, in this case the use in the transporting steel big big steel blades slab and other heavy steel products is basically use the they use the magnetic field uh, to lift this big component because it is a very difficult to lift from one position to another position to handling this material handling system is really difficult. So, in this cases magnetic field can electromagnetic field can be utilized. Similarly, it is asked, uh, other phase the first is the lifting and second is the positioning of this thing. So, it is also employed the basically the positioning in the automated system to ensure the very precise placement of the component steel component. So, that is why both lifting and positioning can be done using uh, using uh, the electromagnetic product technology as a product system. Similarly, it can be hydraulic and the pneumatic products also. So, hydraulic products is basically in this cases use the fluid pressure to move the or positioning of the steel components. So, hydraulic system is used here and uh, the in this to run the hydraulic system also and the, there is some attachment with the some pneumatic system. So, pneumatic system is basically use the compressed air. So, this compressed is basically operate the different valves opening and uh, basically controlling of the valves movement using the pneumatic system. But basic system is oh, here uh, in that cases we can use the the basic system it can works moves with the hydraulic system also or we can use the pneumatic system uh, in this particular process. So, but pneumatic system with the medium is we can use the compressed air and hydraulic system definitely we use the liquid also to transmit the load or transmit the pressure. Now, application we can see the hydraulic and the pneumatic product also the rolling mill. So, rolling mill here the adjusting the position and the orientation of the steel products during the rolling operation. So, we know the steel product it is very important uh, uh, different rolling mill also. So, what uh, the placement of the steel before perform the rolling operation uh, within the rolling mill. Similarly, that is the one task can be done by using this uh, hydraulic or pneumatic uh, products apart from this thing precise positioning for the cutting operation because we need to do the cutting operations the the right portion and of the shearing to sometimes steel shearing action is to be done from the uh, the, uh, the steel component. So, both shearing and the cutting operation in we need the precise positioning of the component. So, this is the that can be is done using the hydraulic and pneumatic products. Similarly, mechanical products also in this cases we use the physical force through mechanical component like we use the gear system, we use the lever system also actuator to handle the steel products. In that cases we say that the mechanical product technologies are utilized to transport the steel or to perform the uh, any task associated with the uh, steel industry. Figure also shows the uh, similar kind of these things that hydraulic and pneumatic system we can see uh, the continuous casting operations are usually fed directly into the rolling mill. So, in continuous casting process we use the rolling mill also thin sheet is produced and then it is placed to the directly to the uh, rolling mill. So, that is the that can be done using the hydraulic and pneumatic system also completely. Similarly, also mechanical products you can see the mechanical products in this case the mechanical system is used to transport the this component from one position to another is the hot. Uh, heated billet can turn be transported and maybe roller can be transported using the uh, mechanical system which is associated with the steel industry. So, it is very obvious from, from the uh, figure also how they are transporting the different position. But in mechanical products we use the two components are there one is the conveyor system. So, moving chills products along the production line we can use the any conveyor belt kind of things can be utilized. Another is the feeding mechanism also inserting steel seats or rods into the machines for further processing we can use the uh, mechanical uh, products technologies. Si similarly, there might be thermal products also. So, that will be useful when there is a need to perform some kind of the heat treatment operation. So, we can use the thermal products technologies. In this case, it is used to manipulate the steel products such that heating specific area very uh, heating very specific area and such that that part will be the malleable to further processing of the steel or before the metal forming operation. So, here application we can see the thermal product is basically heat treatment operation controlling the heating process to achieve the desired material properties heat, heating process as well as the cooling process also 
or we can utilize the uh, the thermal products also in case of the hot forming operation. So here shaping till steel products while they are heated to the reduce the resistance. So from that purposes we can use the thermal uh, product system to perform the hot forming operation. Similarly, robotic products also can be used in this case products can be employed the this the automated robot to handling the component we see in this case handling the components positions and the process steel products with the high precision and flexibility we can utilize the uh, robotic uh, products also. So this figure you can see this figure also we can it describing the uh, thermal products is basically heat treatment operation or maybe hot forming operation we can utilize uh, this thermal product we can see the you can see the steel component is basically handled this way thermal product. Even you see the robotic uh, application the robotic products we can use the high precision and flexibility in the robotic welding you can use automated welding system with precise control we can utilize this thing. Even you can use the assembly lines also automated handling at the assembling line of the steel components we can use the uh, we can use the robotic arm. So how uh, efficiently we can handle the component transporting from one position to another position. So which is directly associated with the uh, any kind of the uh, steel industry. If you see uh, this is the to join the two components also we can perform the welding of the steel also. So the robotic products is basically helps to, to intervention. But over the time uh, gradually uh, uplifting from uh, this uh, the improvement of the product technologies also for example here the electromechanical product. So combining the uh, combination of the electrical and mechanical system also components and this provide the better control of the positioning of the uh, this positioning and handling transporting of the uh, component uh, the steel products this thermomechanical product is more effective. So here you see the automated handling system. So material handling system the integrated system can be used for mo moving and positioning of the steel in manufacturing process even we can use the cutting and shaping very precision control over the cutting and shipping operation can be being using this electro mechanical products. So we see that overall uh, from the different product technologies which is used in that steel industry actually this choice of this product uh, technology depends on the very specific requirements for the steel processing uh, operation. That means what type of the steel we are produced, what are the desired level of the precision we want to achieve and what are the production scale. So a large scale or small scale depending upon the production scale we can decide the different types of the product technologies depending upon the requirement. But overall you can see over the advancement over the uh, this last uh, few decades there is a advancement in the automation is there, advancement in the robotics. There are so many advancements in the sensor technologies also that actually application of this advancement advanced technology to incorporate in the develop the the improvement of the product technologies or I can say that in the steel industry using this advanced technologies is basically increase the capability or maybe capacity of the steel industry is gradually uh, increasing. So here uh, further movement of the uh, more advanced system is possible even for the steel industry by choosing the proper type of the processing uh, product system. Uh, we, we can utilize uh, using the in, in the steel industry. So here are the references we have tried to use these references to explain uh, this uh, this in the steel processing or maybe more related to the different information of the steel processing industry. So thank you very much uh, for your kind attention. Mm -hmm.